Test out the uh, stock diverter valve sound right now. Yes, yeah, so you can't even hear it when you rev it because it just diverts the air internally. So if I had an intake on this car, you'd hear a little bit of a whoosh just coming through the intake, but with the stock air box, you can't even hear it. All right, guys. I'm gonna unbox this dual blow off valve spacer for my GTI. I got it on Amazon. It was $12.07. Got a couple reviews, eh, three stars, so that's not too bad. Let's see what we got in here. It's got a spacer and some bolts, screws. So these uh, will replace the stock ones because it has to go through the diverter valve and the spacer. Uh -huh. First impressions, quality wise, it's got a seal on the top and bottom here. Machining looks pretty good. It's got some alignment holes, so not too bad. The uh, the holes aren't really finished; they're kind of eh, kind of left raw, but that's okay. We'll get the uh, diverter valve out. Get this thing installed. If anybody's never taken a diverter valve out before on a TSI, there's three screws. There's one right there. One right here, and then one on the top. They are uh, five millimeter Allens. So you unplug the connector here, plugs into it. Um, and this one's actually leaking some oil, which uh, is kind of common on these at higher mileage. The seals inside start to go bad and they start leaking oil. So um, go ahead and remove the screw here. So I got the stock diverter valve out. So the original diverter valves from early on, so 2010, 11 had rubber diaphragms in them. Um, they upgraded to this style without the diaphragm. And so I'm gonna install this guy and this is the spacer. So um, these diaphragms were notorious for tearing. They would tear right around here and you get a boost leak and uh, throw under boost faults. So I'm gonna upgrade to this one and install this guy. Well, I just found out that it doesn't fit inside the turbo. The uh, diameter of the opening in the turbo from the diverter valve is just a little smaller than the actual size of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine this down and uh, I'll see if I can get it to fit in there. All right, I had to uh, machine this down a good amount to get it to fit in there. Um, just put it on the grinder and just went around. Uh, slowly to uh, get it to fit right. Um, it does go in now, and we'll see if uh, I can get it to bolt up. Alright, it's installed. It's in there. I'll see if it, uh, see if it holds any boost. Making some noise. And a little bit of some whoosh noise. More of a blow off valve sound, I guess, for these cars. So far, first impressions, are, I'm kind of impressed. It, 
how it sounds. Um, I mean, I've heard a lot of the uh, spacer plates from other companies, and um, you know, they, they all sound about the same. But for 12 bucks, you know, I had to, yeah, spend about, I don't know, 40 minutes um, machining that piece to fit. So um, it, was, it was some work on my part, but um, it bolted in and, you know, it makes pretty good sound. Drivability seems fine, um, you know, since you are venting air to the atmosphere that's metered by the mass airflow sensor. Air fuel ratios can get a little whacked out, um, but the car seems to be driving okay. We'll uh, we'll go do some flyby video and you know hear how it sounds in between shifts uh, from the outside. opinion of the uh, dual dual it's kind of tough to pronounce it um, BOV plate is that it's not something that'll just install um, you got to do some modifications to it I mean it's 12 bucks they didn't machine it properly so it doesn't fit in the uh, TSI turbo I actually tested it in a um, IS 28 and it fit so it would work on an IS 28 I guess but it says it's for a 2.0 TSI um, Granted, I guess that is a 2.0 TSI, it's just Gen 3 E888, but um, as far as the uh, CCTA and CBFA motors go, um, it does require some modification. So, for 12 bucks, yeah, okay, you can get it and you gotta modify it. Um, if you wanna just drop one in, I'd go with a Forge or, you know, one of the other name brand ones, uh, CTS, and that kind of stuff. So, um, it does sound good and the car, you know, performs fine with it. So, if you're looking for a super cheap one, I guess go for it. If not, Definitely get a name brand one that'll just drop in. So appreciate you guys watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.